Hello, KringleCon attendee. I'm Mike Saunders, Mike at RedSiege.com. I am a principal consultant for Red Siege Information Security, and I'm Hardwater Hacker on Twitter. Today, I want to talk to you about Web App 101, getting the lay of the land. What I'm going to do today is give you three stories that illustrate the importance of scoping and enumeration and methodology. So scoping, why is it important? Scoping informs the entire rest of the pen test. When you do a proper scope, you have an informed pen test and you're able to test the application for common kinds of vulnerabilities, but also find the things that are important to the client, which may not be just SQL injection and cross-site scripting. It may be logic kinds of vulnerability, such as being able to prevent user-to-user -user interaction on a web application, or maybe they want to make sure that you can't gain an admin role in the application. Or maybe you have a shopping cart and they want to make sure that you can't use discounts you are not entitled to. Now, the reality in pen testing is that sometimes we need to help the client decide what the scope is. They may not know. Uh, they may have had an auditor tell them, hey, you need to have a pen test done, and that's all the information they have. And this is especially true when we're dealing with large applications. How do we scope large applications? In a very large application, a client might not have the budget to support thorough testing, and that may be a budget of time if you're an internal pen tester, and it may be a budget of money if you're a consultant. In very large applications, we have to make choices, we have to make compromises about the things we're going to test versus the things we might not have time to test. That happened to me as an internal pen tester. My team sat down with the internal client and we talked about a very large financial application. And during discussions with the client, we found that there was actually seven or eight different applications wrapped into one application with hundreds of user roles and dozens upon dozens of different types of functions within each app in this one site. Based on our assessment, we determined that we thought this would take four to six months for a team of two people to test thoroughly, to test end-to-end, -end, and that wasn't acceptable for the client's budget of time. So how do we approach doing an informed test? Do we just log in and test whatever resources that we can find and hope that we find the things that have the highest impact? Or do we use an informed approach based on interactions with the client? And that's what we did. We, we went with the latter. We interviewed the client and found out what does this application do? And it, we know that it's a financial application that has the ability to do currency exchanges. For instance, we get paid in one denomination, maybe we get paid in euros, but we can take that money out in US dollars because of a favorable exchange rate. That's based on analysis the application performs for us. We also have things like sweeping accounts, sweeping money from a paying account into our master account. And if we delay that process, we may make thousands of dollars in interest because of the amounts of money that are in these accounts. And again, that's informed by analysis that the application performs for us. We also have the ability to send payments in this application. So how do we figure out what's important? We asked the client, you know, what are the areas of highest impact? And that didn't translate for them because we weren't speaking in business terms. So we went back to them and we found out these things about the application, that it's a financial application, the kinds of transactions it can do. We also found out who can use the application. This is an internal application only. It's not exposed to the internet, accessible only by employees of the corporation. There's no third parties that are accessing the app. And the employees who do have access to it had a special firewall rule that allowed them to access the application. Without it, they couldn't get to it. So we've greatly reduced the scope of threat actors to this application. We're now talking about employees who have a grudge. Maybe they didn't get the raise they felt they deserved or employees who want to steal money by sending themselves a payment. With those kinds of things in mind, we were able to ask the client what areas would have the highest financial impact? What areas would someone be able to steal the most money or 
impact our ability to make money. And then they understood what we were asking and they were able to put together a list of functions within the application that had the highest potential for damage if they were exploited. And we were able to perform a test that provided value, provided things, provided validation that areas that were important to the client about the application were vetted. Meanwhile, we didn't cover everything, but we gave it a good effort in the time that was acceptable to the client, and we were able to provide value based on that. Now, when you're doing a web app test, maybe you're running into that here at KringleCon, and you're going through HackFest or Holiday HackFest, and you're on Santa's journey and, and you encounter a web application, how do you thoroughly test that application for vulnerabilities? Well, when I test an application, I manually browse to every link, submit every form in an app before I do any kind of automated testing. Before I run my crawlers and before I run any automated scanning, I want to make sure that I've fully mapped out the application. And while I'm doing this, while I'm clicking on links and submitting forms, I'm making note of sensitive and dangerous functions. One of the things we want to know about is the logout function. It might not be called logout in your application, but we need to know what it is to make sure that our crawler doesn't automatically log us out of the application by visiting that link. We also need to be aware of sensitive functions that can modify or delete data. We don't want to modify or delete data just with automated processes because the application may rely on that data later on and that will impact our ability to do testing. So I make note of sensitive functions and I add them to the exclusion list in my scanning utility or my proxy utility to make sure that I don't send automated traffic to those kinds of resources. And only after I've fully mapped out the application do I run any automated processes. And I'll tell you why that's important. It's based on my own experience. Early on in my career, I was working as an internal ten, pen tester and testing apps mainly involved getting a URL from the client and putting it in an automated scanner. We scanned an application that was essentially a bookmarking application where developers had the ability to add a resource that was a link to maybe an uh, article that they felt was important and they could add information about that resource. They could modify those resources and they could delete them. Now, they knew that they didn't want us deleting any data in the application, so they modified the application to comment out the delete function. So if you viewed the source code, you'd see a commented link. We asked them, do you have a backup? They said yes, and so we started our automated test. And within about a minute, we had a developer running down the hall yelling for us to stop. And we were able to stop the test, but not before most of the data had been deleted from the application. And the reason that happened was because the crawler saw those commented out links, as most crawlers do, and it visited those links, and those links didn't have any kind of confirmation step. If you visited them, the data was deleted. And unfortunately, while they had backups, they hadn't tested them, and they weren't able to recover the data. I learned from that experience, and I, I wanted to make sure that that never happened again. So I spent as much time learning about web app pen testing as possible. I read the Web Application Hacker's Handbook. I watched as many YouTube talks as I could. I attended SANS training, and I learned about the process of enumeration, the methodology of doing pen testing. And that's one thing I want to talk to you about is methodology. Now, when I'm crawling and doing my enumeration, I always have two, two windows open. One is my browser and one is my proxy. And as I'm navigating through the application submitting forms, I'm looking at every request and every response that's coming back in my proxy. In my requests, I'm looking at the parameters to see what parameters are unique, what parameters kind of exist across all portions of the application. Are there significant cookies that I need to pay attention to? I'm looking for anything significant or anything out of the ordinary in the application's responses. And the reason I do this is you often find functionality that's been commented out of an application. Sometimes it's old functionality that hasn't been removed from the server, but 
uh, isn't part of the application anymore and may not have the same security controls. So it's commented out, but if you were to access it directly, it would the server would serve up that content. Same thing goes with pre-production content that's been staged on a server. It may be commented out. You're not supposed to see it and you won't see it in your browser, but if you're looking in the responses and looking in the source code and looking in the JavaScripts that are coming back, you will find links to these kinds of resources. And that's exactly what happens. I was doing a pen test on an application where I was provided a user role and I was able to log into the application. And I could do typical kinds of shopping things with this application. I could view products and search for them and I could add them to my cart and check them out. I didn't have any admin functions and I couldn't see any in the browser. However, when I was looking in the proxy and looking at my responses, I was able to see that there were JavaScript files being sent back. And those JavaScript files contained what appeared to be admin functionality. The crawler did not detect this, did not send me any links to, hey, here's the admin section in your application. Instead, I looked at this at this JavaScript and it appeared that it drew menus for admin functionality on the web page based on a certain cookie value. Upon further inspection, I realized that there was a cookie that was being set when I logged in that said whether I was a user or an admin. And by changing that cookie to an admin cookie, uh, which I could understand by reading the source code, by reading the JavaScript that came back in my, in my proxy, was able to create an admin cookie, at which point the browser displayed the admin functionality to me because the application rec relied on client-side validation. And I was actually able to take full admin control of the application because I was looking in the proxy and seeing that. My scanner didn't find any vulnerabilities and my crawler didn't find any admin functionality. But looking in those responses, I was able to gain admin control over this app because I was looking at the proxy and not just paying attention to what's in the browser. So that's extremely important. I want to let you know that this talk is a little brief out of a larger talk that I've given and the slides from that full talk are available here at redsiege.com WA 101 and you can find the talk on YouTube. It's been recorded a couple of times where I go into a lot more detail about scoping and methodology and enumeration, and I also provide some tips and tricks that make my life easier on a day-to-day -day basis as a web app pen tester. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your KringleCon to talk with me about web application pen testing. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me. I'm Mike at RedSiege.com, and I'm Hardwater Hacker on Twitter. Follow Red Siege InfoSec on Twitter to get information about our latest blogs and research, and thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your KringleCon.